Hi all, my name is Mr. Watan and I'm one of the kindergarten teachers at Rising Star Elementary. I just finished a meeting with a few teachers and we decided that we miss you all students and families very much. And we know that educators around Seattle Public Schools also miss you all very much. So we know that we're supposed to be spending more time at home and away from schools. And to support your learning, we got together and decided, let's come to you through the screen. And today in this session, we'll be focusing on kindergarten and first grade math here with Mr. Watan. I'll be working with you over the next few days to support your learning in math, and we'll be focusing on skills appropriate for kindergarten and first grade. However, everybody's welcome. Families, cousins, friends, whoever you'd like to collaborate or work with are welcome. And let's get started. You will need two things today, something to write with and something to write on. I'm choosing to write with a pen and a post-it. It's something that I had handy. You can feel free to use a marker and a whiteboard, a chalk and a chalkboard. Who has a chalkboard? Somebody has one, I'm sure. So whatever you'd like to use to write and capture your writing, feel free to use that to support your math learning today. All right, mathematicians, we're going to do four things today, but before we do those four things, let's address the mathematical practice that we'll be focusing on today. There are eight mathematical practice. Let's count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight mathematical practice. However, we'll be focusing on mathematical practice number one. I'm going to write mathematical practice right there. And mathematical practice number one is make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Oh, that sounds fancy. But what that really means is when you see a problem you want to solve, you're going to go for it without giving up. And that's what mathematical practice number one, make sense of problems and persevere in solving them means. So today we'll be doing four things like I mentioned. One, two, three, four. Count with me. One, two, three, four. I'm going to write number one right here. I'll be showing you what we'll be doing on that side of the screen. And number one is we're going to play a math game. This math game is called Dots and Boxes. This game, Dots and Boxes, has been played since the 1800s, a long time ago. Um, I, started in France, some French mathematician guy decided, let's make some dots and boxes. And people today are still playing them. So number two, after math, the math game is we'll be doing a math read aloud. And it won't be a traditional read aloud where I'll be holding a book and reading that book to you, it'll be presented on the screen for you. And you'll get to interact with the reading through the screen with me. And then after the math read aloud is we'll be doing a math movement time. So we'll be moving today and counting while we're moving math movement. And the last thing that we'll be doing is an image to ponder. Hmm, that sounds fancy image. Image is a picture. Okay, we got that. And to ponder means to think. So you're going to be thinking about the image that we're going to end with today. So Mathematical practice, number one, make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. We're going to be focusing on that while we do this today. Now, since we're working on that mathematical, mathematical practice, let's just get started and start playing dots and boxes. So as I mentioned earlier, dots and boxes, it's been played since the 1800s, so a long time ago. And it started in France, a French mathematician started it, but Everybody can play it today. And some of you may already be familiar with this game already. So bear with me and let's play. So to play math, um, the math game dots and boxes, you'll need two players and you'll need something called an array. An array is a row and a column of dots. So going horizontally and vertically. So I'm going to make an array of three, three, three. And that way we'll play the game dots and boxes with three by three. So count with me. Let's make dots. We're going to make nine dots in total. Don't just 
go off and make nine dots right now. Do them with me. So we set up the math game um, for dots and boxes. So let's see. We're going to need nine. So three first on the top. Let's count. One, two, three. Okay. Four, five, six. Wonderful. Seven, eight, nine. I have nine dots. I have nine dots because when we play dots and boxes, we'll need nine dots first to start the game. So let's count one more time just to make sure that we have nine dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Thanks to all those who counted with me. So we have nine boxes to, I mean, nine dots, not boxes. We'll be making boxes. So to play dots and boxes, the rule is you got to make boxes. You have to make boxes out of this. And you ask Mr. Watan, how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to make boxes by putting one line at a time, either vertically or horizontally. No diagonal boxes today, just horizontal, vertical, or horizontal. Ooh, Mr. Watan, I'm pondering over what I just said. Vertical, horizontal. So you're going to be making Vertical lines or horizontal lines. Now you need two players to play this game. I'm only one, so let's see. <gasps> I know. Panda, cheetah. You wanna play dots and boxes? Yeah, all right, come on. Panda can be on this side. Cheetah, come on over. You'll be on this side, sitting, playing dots and boxes. Now, cheetah and panda, you're gonna play dots and boxes and this is how you play. You need to make one line at a time. You'll take turns making one line at a time. And your goal is to make as many boxes as you can. And you keep track of your points by, let's say, writing C for cheetah and P for panda after you make a box. And whoever has the most boxes at the end gets really good pride about winning. So good for whoever one of you wins. So panda and cheetah. Cheetah, let's see, let's go by the alphabetical um, order. A, B, C, C. C goes first. So cheetah, you go first. And then P, panda, you'll go after cheetah. I hope that's okay. Yes? All right, great. Okay, so we're going to start by picking up a color for you. If you want to use the same color, feel free. But I'm going to use two different colors just to show you how this game goes. So cheetah, you're going to go first. And you're going to use the pink right here. Cheetah, you'll go first. And let's see, let's make a line somewhere. We're going to only make one line at a time. Cheetah, I think let's make a horizontal line at the top right here. Horizontal line, boom. Right there. Well done, Cheetah. Well done. So you're making sense of a problem and persevere in solving it. Let's see how this goes for you, Panda. Panda, where do you think you might want to make a line? Perhaps make a line right here. Ooh. Mr. Watan, let's help Panda out a little bit more. There we go. Great straight line, Panda. Thank you. Cheetah, your turn. So we're making sense of this problem. The problem is making a box and persevering and solving them. You're not going to give up. Either of you or neither of you are going to give up. And let's see, where can we make a line, Cheetah? Why don't we make a line right here? Hmm. Let's see. That's not making any boxes yet. I'm wondering what you two are thinking and persevering and solving this problem. Panda, your turn. Let's see, if you put, Panda, a line right here, maybe you can start making a box. Because if you go down and are back, you can make that box. But you can only make one line at a time, Panda. So it's Cheetah's turn. Cheetah, where can you make a box? Let's see. Ooh, I know, Cheetah. Let's help you out and put a box or a line right here so that you can make a box next. Let's see. However, you have to be careful about making sense of your problem and persevering and solving them because somebody else might be doing the same thing because Panda is thinking that they might close this box right there and that's their point. So I'm going to write a letter P for Panda right there to help him remember that this letter P is for Panda. So Panda got a point. Cheetah, it's your turn. You have to make sense of this problem and persevere in solving it. You have to make a box, Cheetah. Okay, Cheetah, let's make a line right here. Perhaps you can get a point right there. So if you make this line right here, I wonder what Panda's going to go do next, Cheetah. Let's, Panda, it's your turn. Panda, let's make a box right 
or not a box, but a line right there. Because you have to make a line somewhere. And Cheetah, are you making sense of the problem and persevering and solving it? I think you are because you're going to go right there, make this line. Boom. Way to go, Cheetah. You made a point for yourself because you closed the box. Panda, it's your turn. Panda, where will you make the line? Panda, you're making sense of the problem and persevering and solving it. If you make a line right there in the bottom, you can make another point. Let's see. Panda, you closed the box. Way to go. There's the letter P. You got another point for yourself, Panda. Way to go. Cheetah, let's make sense of this problem. What line can you make next to try to make a box? Maybe perhaps go right here. You made a line. Panda, it's your turn. There is one line left. Panda, you claimed it. You took it. Panda, you got three points. Way to make sense of your problem and persevere and solve it persevering in solving the problem. The problem was making a square and Panda did it. So did Cheetah. Cheetah made a square too. Panda got three squares. Let's count. Let's see. One, two, three. Three squares. Panda, Cheetah, one. It's all good. It's all good. Because the next time we can make sense of this problem and persevering and persevere in solving them because we can just play another round. Now, we're going to move on, though, because we have three other things to do. Panda and Cheetah, thank you so much for being my players. By the way, the game is done because you can't make any more lines. But it doesn't have to end there because you can play again with a blank space. So thank you, you two. You can go back right there. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, we're going to move on to the math read aloud. The math read aloud is not like a traditional read aloud like I mentioned earlier. In fact, it'll be a little different. It will be actually on the screen. And to get onto the math read aloud, it's something that you can access at home too. So if you go to the Seattle Schools website, right there down below, and if you go to where it says students and you scroll five down, one, two, three, four, five down, five items down. It should say online academic resources down there. I know the print looks a little small for some, but just scroll five down, one, two, three, four, five, online academic resources down there. You click that. And then if you scroll down, these are the resources available to you at home when you use your um, devices that connect to the internet. And today we're going to do the read aloud through Tumble Books. Some of you may have already worked with Tumble Books and we'll be looking at a book. Now, I know that we're doing kindergarten and first grade math with Mr. Watan. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a tumble search. It's called the tumble search. And then I'm going to scroll down and I know we're doing math. So I'm going to search by subject down here. I'm typing math skills. And then the book that I'm going to be working with you today is called One is a, oh, there it is. One is a Drummer, a Book of Numbers. So we're going to read this today. And after that, we'll do a math movement and we'll leave you with an image to ponder. Let's open this up. There it is. So one is a drummer, a book of numbers, written by Roseanne Thong, illustrated by Grace Lynn, published by Chronicle Books, LLC, Tumble Books by Flash for Shock. So I'm going to minimize this so we can see that the reading's gonna happen right there, and we're gonna start our read aloud. So one is a drummer, a book of numbers. is a drummer one is a race one is a dragon boat that wins first place one is a tail and a cool wet nose one is a tongue that tickles my toes so what do we have one of one of our head oh they did say one nose 
what else do we have one of? One chin. Let's look around. Ooh, I have one letter M back there. What other one do I have? I have one, I don't know if you can see that, one giraffe. I have one panda, as you already knew earlier. What other ones do you have? Feel free to look around your space right now. What other ones do you have? You have one of, maybe you have one chair. I know I'm sitting on one red chair right now. There it is, there's one red chair. What one thing do you have? Let's keep reading this read aloud book. Two are the greetings on our wall, luck and fortune for us all. Hey, they have two luck and fortune signs there. And how many people are there? One, two. Good participation. Are the steamers, three are the buns, three are the egg tarts, here they come. Do they really have three of these things? One, two, three. Yeah, they do. Let's go back to our mathematical practice. Make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Let's see, our problem was counting them and we solved it, we counted them. Let's see, do they have three of these things on this card too? Let's count, one, two, three. Great counting. How about these egg tarts down here? One, two, three, three. Good count. The friends who play mahjong. Four are the songbirds that sing along. Are there four friends playing mahjong? Let's count them. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, four. And are there four of the songbirds? The songbirds are the little singers. One, two, three, four. There are four. Are the seasons I know them all spring summer winter and fall are the fish balls on a stick five are the fingers that I lick wait five fish balls on a stick let's count how many fish balls this girl has on this stick one two three four five one two three four five she does have five fish balls. Are there five kids here too? One, two, three, four, five. What other five things do you have? I just counted my five fingers. Does this hand have five fingers too? One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Are some of you five years old? What other five things do you have around you? Hmm. Do you have five cousins maybe do you maybe have five pencils near you what five things do you have let's six horses on a merry-go-round six are the children going up and down are there six let's count them one two three four five Six, six children. Are there six horses on the merry-go-round too? Well, the children are, there are six children. Are there six horses? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, you can't see their face, but there's their tail. Six. All right. Number of days in a week. What day is today? Let's take a peek. Eight are the dishes. Eight are the candles for making wishes. Does this person have eight candles? Let's count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <gasps> now, I have a problem, and I'm going to persevere in solving that just like our mathematical, pro mathematical practice says. So I think that there are eight people in this image right here, but I want to make sure that there are eight
people. So I'm going to persevere. I won't give up in solving it. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I counted by ones. So you know how else I can count? Two, four, six, eight. Did you count that with me? Well done. Let's keep. Eight Chinese immortals of old. Eight are the precious gifts they hold. Are there eight of them? Let's go back a bit. Are there eight of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice. Nine colored swimsuits. Nine pairs of feet. Nine are the children escaping the heat. Are there nine children escaping the heat? Count this with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <gasps> there she is. Nine. Perfect. Stalks of green bamboo. Ten cool stepping stones to walk on through. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten. There are so many at home and at play. How many have you counted today? The end. Let's take that as a challenge, kindergartners and first graders, and other family members and friends too. How many can you count today? Now we counted her head, we counted her fingers, we counted how many animals I have back there. I counted other things. I know you counted other things too. Let's keep counting today and let's see how much we can count. Let's move on though from the read aloud. We're going to do a math movement. So for this math movement, let me close this up. We're done with the read aloud. For this math movement today, we're going to do simple movements. We're going to do some movements in our chairs. It's easy today. So we're going to count how many times we move. And the first movement that we're going to do is a hop. I'm going to do a hop for my seat. We're going to do five hops. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five. Nice work. Five hops. Now let's move on to, let's do one more. Five and one more make six. Let's do six slides. I'm gonna slide in my chair. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nice sliding. Let's do six. So after six, six and one more make seven. Let's do seven. Ooh, let's do seven arm rolls. Ready? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nice. And seven. Let's go to ten. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's do ten things. Let's do ten. Let's do ten twists. So I'm going to plant my bottom on my seat and I'm going to twist. We're going to twist ten times. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We did ten twists. Nice work. We've done some math movements. Now we're going to go on to the image to ponder. Let me pull up that image. A teacher friend shared this with me, Miss Hoffman. She's a great teacher friend for math. Ooh, here's my image to ponder. I'm going to just look at this image for today. Hmm. My problem is I want to count this, and I'm going to persevere in solving that problem. Let's see. Mathematical practice. Make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Am I going to do that? Am I, gonna, I see dots, but I don't know how I want to count it. Maybe I'll count it by ones. Let's see. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But hey, I want to count it a different way. I'm going to get a shape out. I think I'm going to 
or this round shape. And I'm going to draw a shape. Hey, I want to be able to see this shape. So I'm going to make sure that we can see the shape and not have any outline. Oh, not have any outline. I want it. I want there to be an outline. Please put the outline back. However, I don't want there to be a fill because I want you to see the circles. Hey, look, there it is. One circle. That's two. Hey, I circled two. Do you think we can count by twos? Two, four, six, eight, ten. We got to ten again. Wait, hold up. If I do this, if I shrink this circle, I circled five. One, two, three, four, five. Five, ten. Wait, five, ten. I'm pondering over this image. I'm thinking about this image. How can I count this next? You know what? I'm going to take this off. I'm going to leave this image with you today. And then we can come back to this image again tomorrow and extend our learning and maybe do some more persevering in, pro in problem solving. We'll see you again next time, kindergartners and first graders and all those who are spending time with them today. Thank you so much for spending time in kindergarten and first grade math with Mr. Watan. See you next time. And I'll say goodbye in a language that, ooh, this was my language when I was growing up. I grew up in the Philippines. I used to say goodbye like this, paalam. That's goodbye in Tagalog, paalam.